Clinical practice guidelines help advise those of us who are treating patients, particularly those with rarer diagnoses like acute myeloid leukemia, uh, in how to approach them and what the best practices are for approaching those patients. We specifically identified people who were experts in geriatric oncology um, to bring that aspect of treating older adults into our guidelines. We identified people who were experts at assessing patient reported outcomes, quality of life, also those who focus on palliative care issues and hospice in adults with hematologic malignancies. We identified panel members who had expertise in epidemiology because part of what we do in guideline committees is interpret population-wide studies. And we identified experts in methodology. We decided to take our guidelines from the moment a patient first presents with a diagnosis of acute myeloid leukemia and what that conversation looks like. So we have a section that's focused on risk factors for outcome among this population and how to try to estimate whether a patient is fit or unfit to receive intensive chemotherapy. We start out by asking a very difficult question. Should a person who's older with acute myeloid leukemia be treated with chemotherapy at all? If that decision is yes, the next step is in identifying whether that person should be treated with intensive chemotherapy, which involves a stay in the hospital of four to six weeks, or outpatient less intensive chemotherapy. And if the decision is less intensive chemotherapy, we actually go through different regimens and make a recommendation on which is best. We then go to the next step of patients who are in a remission, what to give in terms of chemotherapy after that remission, and for how long to give chemotherapy? Is there a point at which you should stop or do you keep going ad infinitum for as long as a person is responding? We then get into a very tricky area and that's in palliative care and hospice. Guideline panels haven't addressed whether it should be considered standard of care to give blood product support to patients who have hematologic malignancies who are in a palliative care or hospice setting. Well, we took that on and we actually addressed that and come out with a, a very strong statement about how this would be considered a standard of care for patients with acute myeloid leukemia. One of the things I'm most proud about with these guidelines is we really focus them on patient decision-making and patient goals. The initial conversation we have with a person, uh, an older adult with AML is very different than the conversation we have with somebody who's quite young with AML or with any type of acute leukemia. When I first meet somebody who's an older adult with acute myeloid leukemia, that person invariably says to me, I've lived a good life. And at that point, I don't know what direction that sentence is going. Some of my patients say, I've lived a good life and I would do anything under the sun to keep living that good life, so I want to take chemotherapy. And others say, I've lived a good life, I'm 75 years old, I've seen my children grow up, I've seen my grandchildren. I've had enough, and they don't want chemotherapy at all. So our guidelines are sensitive to that thought process and to identifying what a patient's goals are before we proceed to the step of determining what type of chemotherapy to give.